Hello and welcome to this video. This is the video for the sale of my uh, Ford Transit uh, camper van. It was first registered in 1999 and it's MOT'd until the 18th of December 2023. It's the 2.5 diesel smiley, um, the 190 long wheelbase converted into a camper done a hundred just short of a hundred and ninety two thousand miles and it's registered in the V5 logbook as a motor caravan so I've, I've owned this van about eight years and when I bought it like this, it didn't look like this. This is its original colour, it's Ontario Blue. Um, it required a lot of welding and also resprayed it. So in, I think it was about 16, 2016 or 17, uh, anybody who knows the transits, especially these uh, Mark V smile, there's nowhere they rock. And where they rock, this certainly did. So it had a load of welding, it cost me three and a half grand. And it had, where I've got to jog my memory now. I'll start at the front. It had uh, the panel for this headlight. It had the inner and outer cross members. Oh, Ruby's come to say hello. Hello, Ruby. Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, and then at both sides, it had the outer edges of the wheel arches. It had both sides again at the front. It had the tops for the shock absorbers replaced um, so the shock absorbers go up inside it had the new sections for those replaced both sides it had on this side an inner and outer sill for the bottom step and some repairs to the inside of the step um, it had a repair here and across here and into the base of the step. Down this side it had, now this applies to both sides, to inner and outer sills and outriggers. So on both sides it had, uh, it had um, the sills weren't completely rotten, they were rotted in like this area. So it, all the rot were cut out at both sides and a section of outer sill put in and then it had an, a section of inner sill put in both sides and then the ends of the outriggers uh, were cut away cut back to good metal and uh, made good so that's both sides in and outer sills and outriggers then at the back both sides again it had the outer edges of the inner wheel arches replaced in and out of sill here, both sides. Then it had the the outrigger at the back that was cut out, and new in and out set section was put across. It had this rear light panel replaced. Um, the wheel arches and everything were good, um, and then the spring hangers and the, the outriggers and the floor. A section of floor, the section of floor was completely cut out, the springs were dropped, the axle were dropped, the section of floor was cut out, the outriggers that, that hold the rear shackles for the rear for the springs were cut out, they were replaced, so it had a new section of flat plate floor put in, the new outriggers both sides for the rear um, hangers for the shock absorbers was replaced. Um, that was about it on the welding, it, it had these sections rebuilt in here and in there I should get a torch, I'm going to go under anyway um, and we'll have a, a proper look when it was taken off the road for all the welding um, when it came back I sent it away and I had it completely Resprayed in this on Ontario blue. I 
and this is the engine, the 2.5 DI, Somali engine. Um, I've I've put an, uh, an extra battery on this. It just gives it that bit more oomph for um, winter starting. Uh, recent things that's been done to this, it's had it's had uh, a replacement power steering pump and the new belt for the for the pump and uh, a new alternator stroke uh, water pump belt. Uh, it has, it's had, prior to the test, it had discs and pads on the front. It failed on that back brake binding, so that were taken apart, cleaned up um, by the garage and they put a new brake cylinder in that one. It's had uh, a complete section of our exhaust, um, excluding the, the front piece. Tow bar fitted and step. These tyres are all very good. I put these tyres on, I think it, about 2015, 16, something like that. And there's probably loads and loads I've forgotten. Oh yeah, I replaced the headlights, put brand new glass headlights in it and indicators on the front. Uh, new rear lights, new number plates, new lights for the number plates. Oh, the list just goes on and on. Um, I spent thousands on this van. Um, when I've known it's needs something, it's had it. But it's time to go. Um, I think the last time I took this van out was on a European trip and I went to Belgium, Switzerland and Italy. I went to the Formula One in Belgium at Spa. Uh, then I've had a few days doing the top of Europe experience in Switzerland and then down to Italy to Monza for Grand Prix down there. Never missed a beat. And it does about 32, 33 miles to the gallon. It does have a slight rattle on the clutch release bearing but it's had that ever since I've had it, it's not a problem. Uh, right, so that's the outside and then the welding. And so I'll crawl under here and I'll show you what I can show you and hopefully the camera will pick it up. So we're under the back, the offside rear. Um, so I don't know how good this is going to show up. Uh, so this is the outer sill. Uh, sorry, the inner sill, this was replaced. You can see up there, hopefully, where the outer edge of the... Um, I need to be there, don't I? Where the outer edge of the wheel arch was replaced. And this is on both sides. I'm looking directly up now at the spring hanger and the spring. So all this cross section here, this were cut out and replaced and it's now been made all good in here. In fact it's all good under here. This is where the section of floor was cut out and that runs right to the back of the van. A bit, a bit low here. It's right to the back of the van, and that's the rear valance. Now that's both sides. So what you're looking at at this side is basically what's been done at the other side. And this is the near side, rear. Same again up in that wheel arch. It's had the outer edge. The wheel arch replaced. So 
So this is going to show you the um, inner cell on the near side. So all this was repaired, the ends of the outriggers, etc. It's all good down here. underneath the uh, step at the passenger side this is the near side again uh, showing the underneath the sill near side wheel arch, repairs were done under here but it's all still very good underneath this step and this is the top of the shock absorber that, that fitting that plate there was replaced on both sides all good under here and this is the front offside wheel arch repaired on the rear right sand. I don't know well this camera's picking it up and again in here and the top of uh, that shock absorber was replaced This is the underneath of the uh, offside sill. So I've got it hooked up to the 230 volt for the hot water heater inside. Um, and I've just got it plugged into my shed at the minute and uh, I'm using this adapter which will be coming with the van and there's also one if you're abroad that's a European type adapter so in the back of the van um, to your left you've got a sink underneath is the water containers which I'll explain all about to you shortly on the right you've got a dinette so this is a seating area with a table that also this makes into a bed twelve volt light there twelve volt light here this is the sink and under there it's just like a camping grill which I put on top of here to use going forward you've got this area now in here is the water heater for the hot water and this is a cupboard I've got a 12 volt light there now this cupboard is flicked open like this and you've got a shelf at the top one there and one there another 12 volt light there In 
in here is the gas bottle for the water heater but I normally just use it on 230 volt hookup this, this, the water heater will work on uh, 12 volt, uh, sorry 230 volt and gas and there are the switches flick it down for 230 volt or if you want to use the gas flick that down for the gas it'll ignite start to ignite the heater inside here um, it'll go off a couple of times because it's not been used in a while and it'll have to get gas back into the pipe and back into the system and the water heater is under here so this this lifts out and first of all you've got the water pump it's 12 volt and this is the switch for the water pump up is off down is on and the water heater is under there gas bottle in here now that's a full bottle um, like I say, I don't normally use the gas, I just use 230 hookup. Got a seat here and a seat there, and this, this makes into a single bed. And under this cushion here, I'll show you, is where I keep is where the leisure battery is and uh, the 12 volt buzz bars for for power and fuses. So you lift this up, there's the leisure battery. Now this is a deep cycle gel battery, a proper leisure battery. Um, this has been in the van about three years, um, and what it and it runs off a split charge relay, which is under here. There. And what the split charge relay does is, when so you, you come to your van, you start your van, and you go somewhere. So you've used power. In your batteries under the bonnet and this has got twin batteries on it so the alternate the, so the engine alternator will then top them batteries back up when they top back up the split charge relay will switch on and it'll charge your leisure battery so you can charge this leisure battery on the run so to speak there is another way you could ch charge this battery because this van's on 230 volt um, there is some plug sockets here there so you could actually if you're hooked up to 230 volt on site you could plug a battery charger into there and connect it to this leisure battery to top the battery back up now as I say this area makes into a bed across here and this board here goes across between the seat bases like this to form a base for your bed and then you just simply arrange your cushions how you want them so slide it forward and drop that one back uh, rear seat belts as well And that makes your bed here. Now I'm five foot four, five foot five, and I can sleep quite comfortably on that with a little bit of leg room. Um, if you're quite tall, you might struggle a little bit. So the hot water's now heating up on the uh, on the two thirty. Now this switch here, this one here is two thirty volt and that's in the on position and this one here is the uh, for, for, for gas um, but at the minute I've got it on the two uh, 30 volt hookup the gas bottles in here and that's a full gas bottle um, but when I'm away I don't use the gas um, although it does work on gas I don't use it I just plug into electrics on site In here, 
is the water heater and the pump and this is the switch for the pump that's in the off position that's in the on position and the pump is 12 volt and it's wires to drain the system when you're not using it so just down here there's a little black tap that you flick that way and it opens a valve and releases the water that's inside this water heater and also what I just do as well I just open a tap so it doesn't get like a vacuum in it and airlock it and this is covered so this board goes back in here like that and then it has a cover as well a top cover which is this piece and this just slides in here and the whole thing is tucked away so hot water I've had this on now for about 25 minutes that should be ample so it's colour coded on the top hot that way cold this way so I just swivel the tap open the tap like this it swivels like this so this way is for hot and that is now hot uh, chemistry steam right in that's what we can, but that, that is now hot tap back down spin it across and this is up for cold So I've got two 10 litre water containers under here, these are fresh water and then there's a container to catch waste water. Now these two containers are 10 litres each. Now when I spoke about draining the system back down in there when you're not using the van, um, when you come to refill it, you'll fill these two containers up and then there's a, there's a pipe here. <coughs> a pipe there that just lifts in and out between each container and to fill the system and to get all the air out of it it will use those two 10 litre containers so you put your containers in put your pipe in flick your pump on that'll then start filling up the water heater fill up the water heater and you'll hear the pump ticking away um, when it stops ticking, it means that it's filled the heater and it's attempting to fill the pipes. So this pipe goes to the heater, this pipe comes back from the heater as hot water, and this one comes back through the system as cold water. So, like I say, it'll take both of those to fill it. When the pump stops ticking, then open your taps and let any air out of the cold pipe and the hot pipe it'll splutter out as air and then, then it'll run freely as free-flowing water both on hot and cold. These will be probably empty, nearly empty by this time so I'll refill them then you've got two containers full of fresh water your water system is full and there's no air at your taps then you're good to go. When you're not using the system just flick the pump back off drain it as, as I explained in there um, and just open the, open the tap just to give it a free flow and another bit of advice is actually when you're not using the vehicle make sure that you just put the plug in there then you've got now crawling up your pipes from one thing and another so that's pretty simple so under here at the side of the sink I just use this gas bottle and this little Van Gogh two ring burner um, just connect the pipe up to the gas bottle which is here it just screws in at this end screws in to the rings and then this end clicks onto to the top of the bottle but I would advise if you're going to cook there 
you are going to cook in this area, make sure you have some kind of like, you know, these plastic hard chopping boards just to put under it and then it doesn't start heating the wooden surface up making a mess on one thing and another. Under the sink there's um, a petrol, uh, sorry, a diesel a, a heater, parking heater and that's it there, that runs off diesel and uh, 12 volt and behind there, behind this door is its fuel tank that runs off diesel and to use this I know that the ledger battery is a bit low at the minute so I'm going to charge it up but uh, it has a hot outlet vent there and these are the controls for it so this here um, is an isolator switch now I fitted this isolator switch because when you're not using this heater this panel still stays lit which will drain the ledger battery so to turn this on you flick that switch up the display will show and then you just turn it on with the centre button one click let go and then it's, it says on and then that will run through its procedure to uh, start heating up the, the diesel, to, to fire up the, the diesel hot air heater another thing about this system when you've had it on for a period of time say you know you've had it on for a few hours during the day and you want to turn it off don't turn it off straight away at the isolator switch repress that button it'll say off that's what you want to see and then what, it, what it'll do it'll stop the pump at, at, stop the diesel pump at the heater but it'll keep the blower going and what it's doing it's cooling down the internals of the system and then eventually it will switch itself off after say three four five minutes when it does that then just flick it off at the isolator switch and this here is just a little bit of shelving space so you've got a shelf under and also in there you've got the um, a consumer box for the 230 volt and you've got a little shelf under there and then a ledge for putting I don't know a TV on or whatever radio books things like that and a few plug sockets so you've got a window here with a fly net on it and also a black outline and you've got the same on that side and then I've just got these makeshift curtains there and there and I just pull these across for, for privacy from the front obviously these windows both windows open and uh, the stairs are good and you, you can open the window and tighten the stairs up to keep the windows open um, above the cab you've got another cupboard here These incidentally, they came with the van and uh, they were designed to be put across the door windows, the front windscreen and the passenger door window, but I've never used them. Um, but you've got a cupboard space in there. And then coming back to this area. So this is the dinette area and this makes into a bed. So what you do here, you first remove the table so you'll get all of this leg, squeeze it together, push it all up like this and then it just simply comes out of its uh, rail there. Put this to one side and then here we have a couple of boards and it's same again. Um, these boards come across between these two seat bases like this. Money up, and then you just simply put your cushions down, and then you've got another bed area. Yeah, this is from from that end to this end is six feet. 
Now this also has a bunk, but um, these are the spots for the bunk here. This one's screwed in, into uh, one of the ribs inside the van, but this one is only screwed into wood. Um, so I've never used that top. I've never used the top bunk only for putting light baggage on and one thing and another. The driver's seat and the passenger seat are captain seats, so these seats swivel. Um, so you can, in effect, have them pointing sideways or pointing backwards, but you need to slide the seats forward, swivel them, and then put them in whatever position you want to do. The van has a, a disc lock on it. I've got spare keys. I've got the two sets of keys for this that will be going with the van. And I also have, which is not on at the minute, because I've just moved the van, but I've also got a pedal box. Um, that's a pedal box, and that goes over the brake and the clutch lever. And I've got two, set, two sets of keys for that as well, and that is going with the van. Uh, the seats, coming back to these seats, they're a bit tatty on the bolsters. So I think that's all about the inside. Oh, um, there's a skylight up here uh, with a blackout blind on it. And there's also, um, you can push these up either side to get fresh air in or cool the van down, whatever. And there's one on the back door as well. There. So I think that pretty much explains the inside. Well, thank you for watching this video, and I look forward to meeting the new owner. And I hope it gives you as much pleasure this van as it has for me. Thank you. Bye for now.